Well, folks, I'm back. Technically, I haven't really been gone. I've just been behind the scenes editing the videos for James. But now that the weather is getting nice and I'm settled here in St. Thomas, it's time to get back to doing some car videos. And today we're looking at this 2019 Range Rover Velar P300S. Now this is an interesting vehicle because I haven't had a chance to drive too many Range Rovers and it does sit kind of in the middle of the Land Rover portfolio. It's actually a little bit bigger than the Evoque and a little bit smaller than the Range Rover Sport, which we had a chance to drive a 2014 last year. But this one is pretty well equipped for what you're getting out of it and they still hold their value pretty well. And I think that this is probably the go-to option for people who are looking for a Range Rover Velar and don't want to spend you know upwards of $100,000 on one of the autobiography versions. This has a two liter twin turbo four cylinder engine, which is no longer available on the current model years, but it produces 296 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. And it uses one of the best eight speed automatic transmissions money can buy, the ZF 8HP45 that we've driven a number of times over the years with other luxury vehicles. Now, big thanks to Disbro Chevrolet Buick GMC and Cadillac here in St. Thomas for letting me drive this vehicle, but I shouldn't really say for letting me because I kind of gave myself permission to take this vehicle and do a video on it because I am now a sales rep at Disbro Cadillac. So I'm able to not only show you this vehicle, but I can also sell it to you at the same time. And I'm sure you're wondering, how can I do both? Well, I'm just a superstar. I can not only do my job at uh, work every day, but I can still come do videos and talk about all these cool cars at the same time. So I'm hoping to do some more vehicles on some of the weird and interesting cars that we get in on trade. And we do have quite a lot of them coming in. So this is one of the ones that I think kind of caters towards what we're doing here on test drive, giving you an idea of what a four-year-old Range Rover Velar can offer you. And if you really should be buying it, because you know we've talked about some of the Range Rovers in the past. We talked about the 2014 Range Rover Sport, which is a bigger version in the Range Rover portfolio. They say that this is like a midsize. On paper, it's more of a compact luxury crossover, but because it is so long and that back end is so big, you could almost consider this to be a two row midsize luxury crossover. But no matter where it fits in, in your mind, it is bigger than the Range Rover Evoque and it is smaller than the Range Rover Sport. And there's a lot going for it. I have had quite a bit of fun driving this car over the last little while. I've been taking it sort of as a daily driver to see how it performs and handles. And I have to say it's a lot of fun, even though it's not the top end performance, version if you're looking for a good daily driver this will do pretty darn well now there's a lot of tech that comes on this vehicle we've got heated front seats quad zone automatic climate control there's two zones up front two in the back with screens to be able to adjust everything there you've got a heated steering wheel adaptive cruise control lane departure alert blind spot information a power lift gate a really nice panoramic sunroof one of the things i really like about it is when you park the car it will close the sunroof so that if it's hot out the sun is shining you're not going to overheat the interior cabin and as soon as you turn the car up the shade opens back up it's really nice and handy to have we've also got navigation and the mirror Meridian audio system on here, which it sounds pretty good. Now, Range Rover says that this has the distinct super slim matrix LED daytime running lights, and they are quite distinct. I do like the look of the front end on this. It is pretty similar to the other Range Rover models that are out on the market today, and this will be getting a facelift. I think they announced it actually this year, so within the next maybe model year or so, because on the Land Rover website, still more or less the same vehicle for 24, but they will be getting a facelift. But what's nice is when you buy one of these, since they do look kind of like all the other ones, you get away with getting an older model without having to pay new model money. Now, a couple of years ago when we drove the Land Rover Defender, which was a vehicle I really liked quite a bit, we talked about how much customization you can get when it comes to these vehicles. And there is a lot. I mean, there's a lot of different packages. There's ways to configure the exterior. Almost all the interior things can be changed around like different headliners, different seats, obviously with colors and choices for trim and all sorts of things, different steering wheels. I mean, the list goes on and on, which is why it can be a little overwhelming which is why a vehicle like this, even though it doesn't really stand out for a luxury vehicle, it's white with a black interior, it still gets the job done as a daily driver. Now, I think that's about it for me talking in front of the car. I wanna take the twin turbo two liter engine with nearly 300 horsepower on the road to show you why this is still a fun car despite it being a smaller engine compared to what you can get and why this might be the Range Rover Velar for you. It feels like it's been a while since I have done this. 
I'm almost a little rusty, but I gotta say that uh, last couple months it's been pretty busy. And yeah, obviously you're here to see a review on this Range Rover, not necessarily to hear about my life. So I'll talk about that a little bit at the end of the driving segment before we wrap up. So let's focus on how this vehicle is. Currently I'm in the dynamic mode. There's a couple different drive selector modes and here's similar to what we've seen on the other Land Rover vehicles we've driven. So you got some off-road modes. The dynamic is performance. I like it, it changes the gauge cluster because we've still got mostly an analog setup. It changes the backlighting to red. <laughs> make sure you're sportier that's kind of fun and yeah it kind of changes the revs a little bit so you'll be holding into the gears a little bit more you do have flappy paddles if you want to use them and then you can also put the transmission into sport mode i do like the sport mode on these zf transmissions so i am in that mode right now but it's a good daily driver this isn't meant to be a performance version of the velar and it does a great job doing this yeah, I wouldn't say that this is close even to something like the Mercedes GLC 43. This is definitely just your run of the mill. If you're comparing it, be like a GLC 300 or a BMW X3 xDrive 30i, whatever the, the regular non-M version is right now. And it's fine. You know, a lot of people buy the standard vehicles because they're not really going to do anything sporty with it. The idea is you want to have a comfortable, luxurious vehicle. And when you go with something like a Range Rover, it is different. It is still an exotic vehicle vehicle here in Canada because there just aren't that many Range Rover dealers so you don't see a ton of them around and yeah I mean I've spotted a couple of them here in St. Thomas this isn't really like a luxury city you know we have a Cadillac and there's a Lincoln as our top competitor here in St. Thomas but aside from that there's no other luxury brands that have a presence here in the city so Land Rover even though you can go to London Ontario to get it serviced you know you're not seeing a ton of these around so it is nice to have something that does stand out a little bit the white paint here blends in a little bit but i do like the two-tone we got the black roof and everything it looks pretty cool on this model and you got to look at the back end on this i mean like i was saying outside it is a huge back end on this i do like that i mean it gives you quite a bit of space in the trunk but it is just a unique looking vehicle which is why i say it almost is like a mid-size inside space here not so much i can't really fit behind myself if i'm driving this i did put the seat back just a little bit for filming but when i was sitting back there doing all the b-roll not like a ton of space back there for a larger vehicle like this. That is why it ends up fitting into the compact segment when it comes to luxury crossovers, and that's fine. I mean, you're buying this because, you know, you want something different. You want something that, you know, isn't your typical German luxury vehicle. Maybe you want something that isn't necessarily flying the British flag anymore. It's not really a national champion for England anymore, but yeah, it still holds true to the Land Rover name, and that does have some off-road capabilities, although so I would be very surprised if many of these Range Rover Velars went off-roading. This is more for day-to-day -day commutes and stuff like that, and that's fine. Interior road noise, very good. There's no extra sound deadening on top of this. Like this is how a regular P300S would come, and it sounds quite quiet in here. I mean, if I wasn't talking, it'd be perfect, right? Nice and quiet. Everything's good on that front. Seat comfort is pretty good. I mean, I do feel that these seats hug you a little bit more. And what's interesting is it didn't have heated seats from the factory. I don't know why it was something that was missed on a new 23, 24. You're getting it pretty much included, but you don't actually have OEM heated seats on this specific build although you have a heated steering wheel. So the heated seats were added aftermarket, just the modules and everything. There's little switches on the seats, but you've got the heated steering wheel that came from the factory, adaptive cruise control that came from the factory, everything else that you would normally associate with being higher end luxury stuff. Uh, but for some reason, the heated seats, which is like a base model feature now, uh, it wasn't included, which is kind of strange. Now there are a couple other features that help make this vehicle stand out. I do like the fact that the windshield has a proper de-icer built into it. We've seen this on some electric vehicles and some, not all, but some new vehicles as well have the defrost elements built into the entire piece of glass. So this morning, for example, when I woke up, it was a little chilly here in St. Thomas. I just threw that on and within like 30 seconds, my windshield was completely free of all the frost that had built up on it, which makes it nice. Aside from that, you don't have a remote starter, bit of a bummer. There's also no XM radio. I don't even know if they really offer that, even on the new ones, because this is a European vehicle. 
they don't really have XM radio over there. I don't think it's quite the same experience, so it, there's just no option for it. So we've got terrestrial radio and Bluetooth, and then, you know, the navigation system works well enough. One annoyance I find is when you're driving around and, and maybe stop somewhere, like I am right here at a stoplight, it'll just pop up on the side to say, hey, here's the closest gas station or park. Like, I don't care. <laughs> if I need one of those, I'll go find it. But yeah, it kind of takes up some space there. And I do find that the screen is a little finicky. I've got a couple little issues where you know, I'm trying to push some buttons and it won't work. Sometimes it'll sort of stay locked in. Let's say you're in a drive through or you're somewhere that's got some tight quarters and the parking sensors are chirping at you. Sometimes the screen will basically just lock itself out so you can't turn it off. A bit of an annoyance. And the screen also comes out, or articulates out when you turn on the vehicle. Really, there's no reason for it. It's just kind of fun. Adds to the uh, enhanced exoticness that comes with owning a Range Rover. You've got the second screen below with all your HVAC controls and all of that. You can also switch in between the different vehicle modes as well as some settings down there. So there's quite a bit of screen going on here, plus a couple cup holders and some storage spaces overall. It is pretty well laid out. Similar in a lot of ways to the Range Rover Sport that we drove, the older one, but not quite the same as being a smaller vehicle and being a newer vehicle, it does have a slightly different layout. The design language for Land Rover changed around when this came out in 2017. So this is a much more modern vehicle to that. And the Defender that we drove, despite that being newer, a completely different vehicle. I mean, you're not really gonna be comparing a Defender with something like this, just because they have completely different skill sets. The Defender really is meant for off-roading or really exploring and going out into the wilderness. Whereas this, while you could do it, is gonna be mostly what I'm doing right now. I'm on the highway. I'm on the road. I'm just driving to and from work and I'm happy as can be. Now James has been having a lot of fun back in Quebec being able to rip some of the cars that he's had. So I'm going to put this into manual shift mode and we'll give it a rip. Oh yeah, even though this is not the performance car, it still has some get up and go. And I like it. It actually tells you, you got to shift. It starts flashing when you're supposed to go and you can use those paddle shifters and get into the gear you want. So there's just some fun options there. You're in sport mode. You've got the option for it. I don't know again how many people are going to be using that, but it is nice to have it should you need it. Uh, truthfully, I don't drive around with the paddle shifters. I'm just using it in sport mode, in the dynamic mode. It's plenty fun for me. I get off the line without any issues, and, and that is what's nice. A two liter twin turbo engine. It is pretty small, at least by our standards here in North America. I know in Europe this is not a bad option, and it's not a bad option here either. This is going to get you through whatever you need to do, no problems whatsoever. I'm averaging current Currently, 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, we can't use that as a comparison. Now that I've moved, I no longer have our 100 kilometer test loop system, so I cannot report those numbers anymore, at least how they compare to other things that we've tested. So in this case, that's kind of what we're doing right now. Your mileage will absolutely vary depending on what you're doing with it. But let's talk about the question at hand here. We say, is this a vehicle that you should pick up in the used market? This is four years old now. It's only got 43,000 kilometers on it, so much less than what the typical driving is for a four-year-old car. It's about 10,000, 11,000 kilometers a year on it compared to the average 22 to 24,000 kilometers that most people put on their vehicles. So it is under that limit there. There's nothing wrong with the vehicle. Everything works well. I've had no problems with it during the time that I've had it. Again, the infotainment system is a little finished key but it's not the end of the world it's nice having navigation and everything you know you've got all the fundamentals that you need out of the vehicle and realistically the new models if you're going with a 2023 for example even though the 24s are configurable you can only get the p2 i think it's the p250 now it's a less powerful engine still a two liter engine but you don't get quite as much power and that new configured about the same way as this is here is like 75 76 000 plus tax and everything and we've got this one listed at 55,000. So not only are you getting quite a bit of car, but they do hold on to their value pretty well. So if you're looking to buy one of these new or buy even this one, then your resale value down the road should be pretty decent as well. So again, we haven't had any issues with this. You know, long term, that's something that we'd have to investigate a little bit further, but there just aren't too many of these on the North American roads. So you don't see them too often, but I've enjoyed my time with it. It is a nice option, something different. And I do like that. You will stand out a little bit more in this, even though it is sort of a vanilla color you got the white on the black it's kind of the default color configuration but i like it 
Well, as I mentioned at the start of our driving segment, I just want to talk a little bit about what's going on with me because I have been in the background here, I've been doing all the behind the scenes stuff at PRN, getting all the videos edited for James and also setting him up some, with some new vehicles. So big thanks to him for carrying the torch over the last couple months while I've been moving and getting things sorted out here in Ontario. And now things are pretty much settled. I've got myself the job at Disbro Cadillac, which has been pretty fun after the last couple months now. And now that I've gotten into that routine and getting things more or less sorted out, I do have a little bit more time to do some videos. My plan, obviously, is to find some other classic cars and other vehicles that are interesting to do videos on. And, you know, over time, we'll be able to do some more of them. At this time, you know, I'm looking at some of the stuff that we've got in our inventory, like this Range Rover, that might be kind of fun to do. I'm also enrolled at Georgian College. Just like when I was in Quebec, I was also doing school. So is it here in Ontario. So I've got a pretty busy plate. I am taking automotive business as well as editing all the videos for James, trying to do my own videos and also working full time. So I hope that you can understand that the videos will not be as often on my end of things as I'm working on everything else around behind the scenes, but I do hope to get some more stuff going on. So as always, if you've got something that you think is kind of interesting, maybe you can come out to the London area here in St. Thomas specifically would be great. We've got a little area that we're looking to film at here. And uh, if you've got something that you'd like me to feature, let me know. You can email me anytime, Niall at perpetualradio.ca. You can leave a comment in the video below. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as well. But let me know what you think of this vehicle. Let me know what you've been up to in the last little while. And I hope that I will be doing more of these on a bit more regular basis for you here now that we've gotten everything set up. But I want to thank you for watching the video. Thank you for staying with us here at PRN. And I hope that you had a great day. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.